Okay, so this morning we are on an absolutely treasure laden oh, yeah. foreshore and we cannot <laughs> wait to get going. I mean, my eyes keep going over there. I know, all look, I can see. You can see stuff just below us and everything. There's so much stuff here. So, let's, let's do, do it. it. Deco, isn't it? So I'm going to keep it. Here is my first find. And you know what? I think that is Mother of Pearl. Oh wow, it is. A whole Mother of Pearl handle. It's got a little hole in the top. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Amazing that it survived. Look at that sheen. Oh, there's a little bit of brass there. Oh, it's a handle. Spoon handle. I'll take that, it'll come in handy. Two handles actually, in a way. Okay, I spied something brass down here. I've got an eye in for brass. Um, and I thought it was broken, but it's really symmetrical, so I don't actually think it is broken. Yeah, look, it's it's definitely symmetrical. I don't think it's broken at all. Oh. I don't know what it is. They're like moth wings or something. Like butterfly wings or... Yeah, it's a, like a beautiful decorative piece of brass. That's really cool. Look forward to cleaning that up. I love this little Art Deco style winged buckle. Could it have been a shoe or purse decoration? Or perhaps it was worn at the neck on a velvet ribbon? If you've seen anything similar, please let us know in the video comments. A bit of brass with a hole in it. Good for making things. And can you spot that? It's very well camouflaged, but it's a giant horseshoe. Look at the size of that. I think it's a bit too big and heavy to carry. Okay, this might be nothing, but just as I was kneeling down over there, I spot something here. Green. Can you see that? Oh, I think it is something. It's definitely something. Oh. Is it a bead? Wow, that is a funky bead. Let's take it take it down to the water's edge. This is really looks really cool. Wow, I think it is a bead. It's got a hole there and a hole there. Wow, that's so funky. Look at the shape of it. I've never seen a bead like that before. That's really cool. Wow, it's two really interesting finds. Can't wait to clean that up. More miscellaneous pieces of brass for me to make things with. Something else down here that's quite difficult to spot, but can you spot it? It is actually in the center of the screen, so let's go down and have a look. It's a soldier, I think. Yeah, that's a soldier. His feet are missing. But on that side, he's covered in slime, so he's very disguised. And down here, I think I found some soldier's legs. <laughs> I think that one's a little bit too far gone. I dug this out really weird, but interesting. It's like a bit of clay or concrete or something and three glass or ceramic like triangular cone shaped things and one of them is completely melted over so i'm wondering if this is some kind of 
kiln temperature gauge because that's what they do in the kiln you put cones in the kiln of ceramic and fire them and depending on how much they've slumped you know at what temperature to fire your pottery at <laughs> don't know how well I explained that but I'm wondering if that's what it is there are far too many berries masquerading as beads and they need to stop. There's another one, but is it? Is it a berry or is it a bead? I've got to check if I can get it. <laughs> oh wait a minute, it is actually <laughs> it is actually a bead. I was just gonna walk past it. That just goes to show, always check to see if those berries are actually beads. Because look, there is a berry that I just showed you. Look how similar they are. It's even got the bit on the end. But I'll show you that it's a berry, because look. It's even got the bit on the end that looks like a hole. But look, it's a berry. <laughs> this one's a bead. And another slate pencil for our ever-growing collection. Actually, that one's strange. Sorry, I wasn't holding it in the middle. It's got a bit on the end. Maybe it was tied to something. A bit of string or something. So they, uh, they shaped the end. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Here's a few bits and bobs I've been picking up. I found this coin where last time I found the doll's eye and it's got kind of a bit of a silvery sheen to it. Might not even be a coin but what I have found down here is definitely a coin. Can you see it? There and I can tell already because I can read it. It's a silver threepence. Oh wow look at that. A proper little silver threepence. What's the year on it? Yeah, you can see the three. Well, I can't see that. 1905? 1905? Oh, and there is, um, what's, his, what's his face? Victoria's son. Edward the Seventh. Is that him? I don't, I, you know what, I can't even remember, but that says 1905, which is about right for the age of this dump. That's so cool, it's really clear. Finding precious metal is always a thrill and this coin turned out to be a 1905 silver threepence. In early medieval times, silver coins were made of high purity silver. Silver pennies were called sterlings or starlings, meaning little star, and 240 of them weighed roughly a pound. Hence, before the introduction of decimal currency in the UK in 1971, 240 pennies equaled one pound. From the 12th century, British silver coins were made from 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper, an alloy which became standardised as 925 sterling silver. In 1920, the silver content was reduced by 50%, and from 1947, the silver was removed altogether and they were made from nickel, which means our coin is made from sterling silver. I think that's mother of pearl button. It is. Oh, there we go. It's my second mother of pearl thing today. I just spotted this and I half dug it out and I think it is what I think it is. Yeah, it's a leg. It's a leg of a jointed ceramic doll. <laughs> I love legs. We both love legs. There's a bottle here. It's a little one. And it's Daddy's. Daddy's sauce. 
Oh, tiny finds here. I think I found a piece of silver. I think that might be silver. See, it's kind of like a dark grey kind of colour. So that's cool. I think maybe the bezel of a watch. And a ceramic bead. And down here... A little cowboy. <laughs> With knee head. <laughs> got like a little green jacket on. Oh, they've always got some part missing haven't they? And by now we should all know what this find is. It's an alligog knuckle bone. Jack. It's a bit crusty but it should clean up and go into our collection. Pink seems to be one of the most uncommon colours for knuckle bones and this is only the third pink one we found out of the many in our collection. Found this bit of brass chain inside of a crusty lump. So I'm going to try and smash it out. Well, yeah, it's, it's a chain. It's very rusty. Okay, I don't want to do any more than that because I don't want it to break. And you never know, it might be silver. You can see it's a little bit green, but it doesn't mean it's not silver. It does look a bit silvery in the middle, doesn't it? That would be awesome if it was a big chain of silver. That would be so cool. I won't hold my breath, but we'll definitely take it back and I'll give it a, a decent clean. Okay, so Alex has found what looks like... It might be. It might be. It might not be. We might be eating our words. But it could be a silver chain. Well, look, can you see where it's kind of exposed, where I've hit it. It's I'm it's kind of, in. Hang on a sec. it's kind of like a greyish colour. Can yeah, you see that? Yeah, keep it still. Which makes me think it is actually silver. Because we found last time, remember that? Yeah, um, the Albert chain, Albert the chain dog clip. clip. Yeah, and that looked like it was yeah, made of brass. And exactly. it turned out to be silver. So, although when I first found it, it looked like brass, but when I knocked it, it looked silver. If so, that is a big old silver chain. And of course, you're going to find out right about now whether it is or not, and we have to oh, wait. Oh, exciting! Unfortunately, after meticulous cleaning, we don't think the chain is silver after all, but probably nickel silver, which is an alloy of copper, nickel and zinc. It's actually a type of watch chain called an Albert chain. The T-bar would have hung from a loop part way along, one end would have terminated with a fob or watch key, with the watch itself being on the other end held by a swivelling dog clip. The chain was named after Prince Albert, the husband of Queen Victoria, who was particularly fond of wearing this style of watch chain. Funnily, we found a silver dog clip at this location a few weeks ago. Now all we need is the T-bar. Oh, and the pocket watch itself, of course. I can't leave the house without finding a doll's ear. <laughs> it's a bit of a crude one though, so I might leave it behind. But I did see just then a Vulcanite stopper. I'm still holding on to my chain because I haven't put it away yet, but I'm still really hoping that it is silver. I mean, you'll have seen it by now. Oh, fingers crossed, you've seen a silver one. Can you see something orange down here? I think it's a bead. Yes, it is. Look at that. It's so orange. 
and beautiful. I haven't been to like this before. So pretty. Pressed glass, you can see the seam there. Probably check. Found a humongous. Mother of Pearl button here as well. That is humongous. I found loads of Mother of Pearl today. Well, three things. What's this? A random piece of something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I found the bezel here of something like a watch. But I think it might be silver. See how it's this grey colour? So yeah, I think we're having a silver day today. It's a giant bead. It's ceramic. I don't actually know what it is. Is it like the weight of a fishing net or something? A weight of something, anyway. It's cool, so I'm going to take it. Beautiful basket weave pattern on this shirt of pottery. And I think that would look lovely as a pendant. I think this is another one of those big old crystals. It is cut glass. The very top has broken off, but you know what you could do? Drill a new hole through it at the top. Look how pretty. Cut glass. Oh, that's lovely. It's an ear. It's always the ear. I think I've actually found a really cool fossil. Look at this. What is that? Is it wood? Petrified wood of some kind? That's cool. Oh, and literally just about three seconds later, I found one of our... Oh, it's a domino! <laughs> it's a little bit battered up around the edges, but it's still a domino. A wonky old domino. Okay, so it's berry season. So that bright red thing might just be, like, a berry. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't think it is. Is it a bead or is it a berry? looks very much like a bead. Very much a bead. Look at that. Oh, it's really detailed. Beautiful pressed glass bead. That could very well be one of the Niger Brothers designs as well. So that would make it extra special. Wow. Now there's something here that looks quite interesting. I don't know what it's made out of. It can't possibly be silver again. I found so much silver today. But it's not. It's, it's like that greyish colour. Oh, zoom in again. That I was talking about. It might be pewter, but it doesn't feel heavy enough to be pewter. I don't know. <laughs> Imagine if it was silver again. What an amazing amount of silver we found. We aren't 100% sure what this pretty decorative object was off, but it appears to have been made through a metalworking technique called chasing and repousse. It looks like it could have been the silver trim of a purse or book. The rest of our silver hall consists of watch bezels and, of course, the silver threepence. Is this a cod marble? Yes. <laughs> it is. Alex just spotted this and we think it's a candle holder for a cake. Yes. Oh no, the petals are broken off. Oh, it's a good one. We've got two, three of them now. We've got a collection. We've got a collection of these. Excellent. 
except this one's the only whole one we found because they always have one petal broken off for some reason. So that's cool. Yeah. And over here, we've got a pipe ball. Oh, R-A-O-B. Oh, let me zoom in again. It's Royal. Our Royal Antediluvian Order of Buffalo. What buffaloes have got to do with anything? Who knows? There's not even buffaloes in this country. No, there isn't. No. And it's I think it's the oldest or largest fraternal organisation, isn't it, in the UK? I think so, yeah. Cool. Women aren't allowed to join. No, they're so not. It's very sexist. Another giant bead. It's a caster, which is a wheel, but it's ceramic. So to me, this is a bead, 100% a bead. I found another one. Can you spot it? It is a leg, another leg. And this one's a bit more elegant actually. It's got a heel look of a ceramic uh, doll, possibly held together with elastic, elastic coated joints, and a very elegant little shoe on there. Fantastic! It's a bead, a beautiful burgundy bead, glass bead, and I've got two more down here. So this bead, I thought I wasn't going to film it because I thought it was broken. Then I realised it's not broken at all. And the hole goes through there and then out there. And then mum made me realise or suggested it was a leaf. A little leaf bead. How cute is that? A little leaf bead, that's a first. And I also hear another bead. This is one of those long red like beads from around a lampshade. So there's three lovely little beads there. Tiniest of bottles. Look at that. Oh. <gasps> Almost lost it. It's mini. Must have been a little perfume bottle. Oh, what's that? Oh, what is that? Is that a big bead? Oh, it is. It's a be big, beautiful, faceted blue bead. Oh, lovely. There's a practically whole pipe here. <sighs> Look at that, and you can see where the teeth have been on the end there. But the bowl's broken. I'm going to take it anyway. I think I've just got a dewy looking lens down here. They're still a bit dewy <laughs> this morning. It's a lovely one. No chips or cracks or anything like that. Another big bead? Is it a bead? Yes. Another huge glass bead, isn't that beautiful? A glasses lens. <laughs> Love finding these. I see something looking up at me. <laughs> That's really weird. It's the nose and an eye and the teeth. Yeah, they're stuck on the back. <laughs> teeth, teeth on the top 
blip. I'm gonna keep it, of course. Pretty sponge wear. What's this? <gasps> it's a little doll, but I think it's I can't see its face. It's, it's, it's backwards. It's not. Oh. It's a little That's doll weird. with no face. Maybe the face was painted on. Or maybe it's melted, but it's porcelain. How can it be melted? I think the face might have been painted on. It's got a little hands there. That's so cute though. That is Isn't so that cute. cute. A faceless doll. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I love, look, she's got a hand. I know. Like, like that. Like praying. Praying for a new face. <laughs> okay, so these are my first ones of the day. A cod marble. And I found that. A lovely chunky bottle stop. A little bit of porcelain sticking out there. Is it anything? Oh, I think it was... I think it was part of a doll's arm. <laughs> far, far, too far gone though, I'm afraid. Just look at this piece of glass. It's got like bubbles all over the surface to form a pattern. I wonder how on earth they did that. That is beautiful and I'm keeping it. We think this amazing bubbly red glass shard could be out of a stained glass window. We certainly intend to make something new with it. Minuscule bead. Red. Another red one. Goodness, no. <laughs> Another cannon. This time it's got its carriage. Wow. That is amazing. It's got its carriage. You wait to find a cannon all your life and then two come along almost at once. That is gorgeous. It's complete. I think there's just a little loop missing off the back. Fantastic. I absolutely love it. I'm absolutely over the moon with this cannon. We often find lead soldiers and animals, but until recently, never a cannon. If you remember, I found the barrel of a toy cannon a couple of weeks ago and also an unidentified piece of metal. After finding this week's cannon, we realised that the metal bit was part of the side of the cannon carriage. This cannon is almost complete with just the wheels missing and probably dates from the early 1900s. Wow, that's so cool! I, you found like the last time we were here the I barrel know, just a barrel and now i found a cannon yeah. sitting on its carriage the whole thing and we've never <laughs> found one before just needs wheels yeah maybe, maybe we have maybe some. We've got some yeah <laughs> that's really cool i absolutely love it i found a little patch of metal here oh wait mum's found something over there oh well <laughs> i'll have to go and see what she's got in a sec a whole brass doorknob um because i've got something exciting down here as well a, another bottle stop a little i think it is a lead fella yeah i think it's a lead fella blowing the trumpet but here it looks like a ring oh wow ring it's a bit squished it's like a tin like a Christmas cracker present like a little cheap little like tin lead alloy ring 
We found a similar, something similar to this once actually. It's um, like a joke ring and you like can squirt water in someone's face. <laughs> but this is not one of those. This is just a little decorative ring. It's just teensy tiny. It's never gonna fit on any of my fingers. Be for a child. More MOP. It's a little brass mother fell button this time. And another bead. It's definitely a bead. <laughs> That's beautiful. Sort of a salmon pink coral colour. That's fantastic. Found another bead. A little red glass one. Which is really similar to an, another one I found today actually. Mum says she found a few bees down here and I think I've just found one as well. Beautiful salmon pink coloured bead. Oh, and before I turn them off, it's a button as well. And there we go again. A little amber bead, methinks. Oh, look at it in the morning sun. Oh, is it going to be whole? Look. No! No, it's not. Oh, I'm sick of finding these without heads now. That's so unfair. Cruel and unusual. Again, it's a bead. Slightly melty, but I think the hole still goes all the way through, so. This possibly looks like it could be a little face. Oh, yes it is, look. It's a little lady. Part of a figurine, she's all broken. Um, I dug this out, actually. I just saw the corner of it, so that's a recent find. Need to get some of the water out. Yeah, complete little ink bottle. And I also found this, which is lead tin alloy, and I think it's antlers. Just really random. Some squished antlers. It's a beads. Beads, because there's two. And I think they're of the same necklace. You probably can't spot them, so I have to zoom in a little bit. Right, there's one just here, look. Tiny little glass bead, and then down here, can you see it? There as well. They're very much, well, they're very similar, aren't they? They're not quite identical, because they're slightly different colors spot this little bead here out the corner of my eye it was really difficult to spot because I was standing up but look at that beautiful faceted blue bead another blue one it's been a blue day today okay so we spot something down here can you see it it's not this random glass pillar. <laughs> it's this thing here. It's a little toothpaste bottle, but let's see if it's complete. Oh, yes! Oh! That's cute. We've never found one of those before. A tiny one, but we found like a, like a, a big version, but oh, it's tiny. That's like the little sample one, isn't it? It's so cute. Oh, oh my I'm so pleased we've never found one. And that there it is. is. Just like a little miniature one. Oh. Maybe it's a travel one or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it says it on the bottom there. Can't see it very well, but it says Odol. Fantastic. I love it. Me too. Alex found this amazing Odol bottle. Little mini toothpaste. I'm so pleased we've got a whole 
whole one, like a whole mini one because we've never found one. And I found this as well before. It's a broken mini like baby feeder, like a doll's, a doll's baby, baby bottle. bottle. Oh, what um, a shame it's not whole. I know, it's really broken. But that's the next one on the list to find. <laughs> how excited we were to find this Odol sample bottle. And just look how tiny it is compared against this regular size bottle we found a few years ago. Carl August Lingner was born in Magdeburg, Germany in 1861. Despite leaning towards art and music, Carl began his career as a clerk and then an advertising copywriter for sewing machine manufacturer. In 1888, he teamed up with Georg Wilhelm Kraft and founded the company Lingner and Kraft in two rooms in a wash house. Here they produced all manner of weird and wonderful inventions, including a patent toweling body brush, a boot jack, a lamp wick cleaner, and a hygienic ceramic mustard pump. Unfortunately, the last product failed and the entire remaining stock was buried in their courtyard. Lingner left the company and teamed up with chemist Richard Seifert. This is when he learned about modern bacteriology and came up with his idea for an antibacterial mouthwash. Up until then, little attention had been given to oral hygiene and Lingner quickly took advantage of the gap in the market. In 1892, Lingner founded the Lingner Dresden Chemical Laboratory where he produced his famous Odol mouthwash in its distinctive bottle. With the aid of widespread advertising campaigns, Odol was soon selling all over the world. Odol mouthwash along with Odol toothpaste is still being made and sold today. That is the most beautiful green bead. Oh, it's lovely. I wonder if that's uranium glass. It's so green. Okay, so a couple of finds down here. This. What is it? It looks like some sort of comb. Maybe some sort of hair clip. It might have had a hinge. Oh yeah, look there. Look, there was a hinge there. There was probably two of them and they clipped together to hold a bun in place. How cool. And then down here, I have spotted a cod marble. Two nice finds. Oh, look here. I've got a beautiful white heart bead there, look. Oh, and these were used as trade beads. And a morning bead. It's got the double holes, but unfortunately, I'm trying to film and not lose them at the same time. Unfortunately, it has broken in half. Look, that's a shame because that would have been so pretty. But I'm so happy with that little white heart bead. I love finding them. So many wonderful beads. It's no secret that we love them. People often ask why we get so excited when we find them and there are as many reasons as there are beads. They have been made and worn for thousands of years by all cultures and civilizations around the world. They occupy an important place in history and can tell a lot about people and the societies they lived in. They are connected with magical, spiritual and religious beliefs, being used as currency, as amulets to bring luck and protection, and worn to show status or just for fashion and the sheer joy of them. So, despite their diminutive size, beads in all their shapes and colours will always remain an important part of human history and will always hold a place in our hearts. I've just found something really wonderful. Look at this little bird. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness. It's beautiful and it's complete. A beautiful little bird. Wow, I absolutely love that. It's like a little grouse or something. 
How cute. Wow, that is the cutest little, that is amazing. Look, Look how detailed it is. I know. It kind of looks like beautiful. a finch. Yeah, it, it's like a grouse or a finch or a, I don't know. Maybe it's it's either an exotic bird that we don't recognise or it's just like a made up bird because they did that, didn't they? It looks like a goldfinch though. It does. It looks quite finchy. Yeah. But I love it. <laughs> it's it's detailed. It's so brightly coloured and glazed and it's amazing. It's lovely. Oh, I <laughs> love it. It's the small things in life and mudlarking that sometimes bring us the most joy. When this little bird fell from the soil, I couldn't have been happier. I think it's meant to represent a goldfinch, although they don't have a crest on their heads. It could have been a cake topper or broken off a lid or a larger ornament. Whatever it's from, it's a joyful little find. I think I might have found a bead. It's blue and kind of round. Yes, it is. A lovely blue bead. Oh, lovely. I love these beads. I seem to find a lot of these blue beads here. Fantastic. What does this say? It's an alphabet cup. It's D. And it's, <laughs> this is funny, D for digger, what am I doing right now? Digging around in this bank side. <laughs> oh, the irony. Oh, that's a cute little bottle. <sighs> oh my goodness, that is so cute. I love it. It's like a tiny little sauce bottle. Keeping that. There's a pipe bowl here. Will it have anything interesting on it? Yes, a heart. <laughs> a heart and a TW. Of course there's a heart on it. I've just found an elephant and we found like these here before. It's a little bit broken though. Oh, it'll go into our little elephant collection. <laughs> I found this down by the water. It's a tiny little stone heart, like a little pebble. How cute is that? And then I found this like rusty this lump of stuff here and it kind of has can you see like gold golden and i think it's part of a watch not sure if it is actually got if it's gold or whether it's yeah but i'll put that in my bag see if i can clean anything up a little like lead toy lid of something as well. Look at that. Okay, so Darcy, a little friend of ours now who digs here, has found the most amazing little doll's head. So I'm going to zoom in and we'll have a look at it. Look at that. That's amazing. I absolutely love it. So well done, Darcy. That's fantastic. What do you think of it? It's good. <laughs> it's great. Is this ink hole? I think it is. Oh look, it's so cute because the, the top is crooked. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's kind of slumping in on yeah. itself, isn't it? That is so cute. Little oh. pen rest ink. Fantastic. My final find of the day. I couldn't work out what this was when I dug it up, but it is a pipe bowl. It goes that way. And the pipe bowl is, I think, the ball. And there's obviously a boot kicking the ball. It has got a big chip out of it there. But it's too cool not to take because we haven't found one like that before. 
So we'll add it to our collection until we find a more complete one. Because that's really cool. Our table this week really is dripping with treasures. We had an enormous amount of fun finding them and loved taking you along with us. If you've enjoyed watching, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. It's free to do so and really helps our channel grow. What a brilliant morning, another brilliant morning on the foreshore and we found some really amazing, amazing, amazing things. Like fascinating things, things we've never found before um, that we weren't expecting to find today really. No, not really. Like some really nice brass and hopefully, we don't know yet, but some silver. Well, you know, we don't. So. And we're really <laughs> hoping that those, that chain and those other things are silver. And we've got loads of beads as well. I know. So, yeah, it's been a real bead day. A bead it? day, yeah, definitely. So anyway, on that note, the only thing left to say is a goodbye and thank you. So a huge thank you to everyone who has left a comment below down in the description. <laughs> like the video, subscribe to our channel, and of course, a special thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon who help to keep us going every month. Thank you so much. And of course, to everyone else who has donated or yeah. helped our channel in any other way. We really, really appreciate it. We do. And we'll see you again next, next week. week. Bye. Bye.